Hey guys, welcome back to Renderites. We've reached so many milestones since the last video, I don't even know where to start. 2,000 subscribers, 2,000 likes, 30,000 views on a single video. What the Pokemon! F Who knew that a single video can blow up this drastically and completely change a YouTube channel? Anyways, before we begin with the video, I just wanted to announce a few things. But if you want to skip directly to the content, the timestamp is given on the screen. First up, I want to thank you guys personally for all the support on the channel. You've been showing me constantly how good of a community you are. Some of you also tried to recreate the scene from the last video which is a first timer for me and it is really good to see how talented you guys are. So we hit 2k subscribers which is amazing and since I didn't get to make a special video for 1k, I did a community poll on what video you wanted to see next and a lot of people voted for a beginner compositor video so that's what this video is all about. By the way, I also created a Patreon page recently so if you want to support me to keep making such content, you can just head over to the link in the description for my Patreon page. You can donate any amount you see fit for my content and also get cool rewards based on the tier of your donation. If you get to the expert tier and above, you'll get access to all the original projects used in the videos including the ones I'm about to show. So anyway, without any further ado, let's get into the video. In this video, we're gonna dive into the basics of using the compositor in Blender 2.81. The reason why we're using 2.81 for this is because there's a new denoiser compositor node in it which is not present in 2.8. You can learn more about it later in the video. First up, let's familiarize ourselves with what the compositor really is. The compositor allows us to basically enhance or modify an image or a sequence of images in some way. In even simpler words, let's say you have made a render of your scene and you want to make it look cooler by tweaking the colors, the contrast, or even add more stuff on top of it, you would use the compositor. Not the best way to put it I guess, but I hope you have a better idea about it now. In Blender, compositing is done using nodes. I assume you're already familiar with nodes as it is also used in materials in Blender, but if you're not, don't worry, I'll try to make it as simple as possible. Since this is an introductory video, we'll only cover the post-processing side of the compositor. So you'll learn how to enhance your image in this video, but not how to add, remove, or modify parts of it. So let's first take a look at the compositor window itself. If you switch over to the compositing workspace, the first thing you'll notice is the familiar node-based workflow. We also have this dope sheet editor which is handy in case you're working with videos, but since we aren't, let's just close this out. Now you'll be left with the render layers node and the composite node. The render layers node will be sort of the image input of your scene into the compositor node map, which means that you can access the scene's render layers with this node and output it along with some other data to process the image further. We call this extra computing data as passes. This is basically from where everything starts. Then we have the composite node, which is the final output of the whole compositor node map. It updates automatically after every render or after every new node you put in. So if you have made some changes in your scene and you render it again, you don't have to add the nodes again and run it. It will automatically run through them and give you the final output. Now since we haven't done a render yet, there's nothing shown on the render layers node. Clicking here on this little icon will render it out for us. Before we do that though, let's tweak some things. Let's go to the layer properties tab and then turn on the denoising data, which will help us in denoising the image later. Let's also turn on the mist pass. This should be enough for now since we aren't going to do anything super crazy. Let's go ahead and render it out now. After rendering it, we can enable backdrop here to see the image as we're compositing it. Just enable it and press shift plus control plus left click on the output that you want to view. Now let's resize it into something smaller so that it doesn't get in our way. You can also move the background around by holding alt and the middle mouse button and then left click to confirm it. To start off, let's try to denoise this image because we can totally see how noisy it is with 128 samples. The controls here are very similar to any other part of Blender. Just press Shift A to get this menu and add the nodes. We're going to go to Filter and then choose the Denoise node. We can see that this node has a few inputs. The first one is the image where we can either plug in the image or the noisy image from the render layers node depending on which one looks better. For the normal, we can just use the denoising normal output and hook it up there. And use the denoising albedo output for the albedo input and the denoise node. I decided to use the noisy image output for it because I think it looks slightly better than the regular image output. Now we can see how much less noisy it looks. 
Since that's out of the way, we can try and tweak some colors of the image to make it look even sexier. But since we don't have much to do with the raw data of the image anymore, we can just save this denoised image and bring it into the compositor to tweak the colors. This is an optional step that helps to bring down the computing time in the compositor by, well, quite a lot. So let's press F11 to bring up our latest render which should already be denoised since we have hooked it up to the composite node. Then we can go to image and save it somewhere. Now let's head back to the compositor, delete the denoise node and add an image node. Then we can select the image that we just saved. Now we can simply use this node to tweak the colors as much as we want. So let's first drop in a hue saturation value node and bump up the saturation to 1.3 and factor to 0.8 to make it a little subtle. This already looks much better. But I think the grass here needs a little more green. Eh? So let's drop in an RGB curves node and click on this little G icon which stands for green, obviously. Now we can see this line going right here in this graph. Just pull up some of the mid-tones here and oops, it looks absolutely horrible. It is affecting everything but we only want it to affect the grass, right? So what we need here is a way to mask out just the ground part which is closer to the camera. So we're gonna make use of the mist pass that we enabled earlier. If you preview it, it looks just like fog. It gets whiter the further it is. So we're, we're just gonna try and isolate the ground parts in this image. To do it, let's use a color ramp node. Let's first flip these handles over to the opposite sides so that the closer regions are white. Now just bring them closer like this to increase the contrast and that will leave us with the grass and some of the trees which are almost silhouettes so it doesn't really hurt to have them. Besides if we treat the greens it might also work on the leaves of the trees if they are visible so it really is a win-win situation. So after you have made the mask hook it up to the factor input of the RGB curves node which will tell it to only work on the areas marked by the white parts of the mask. Now let's go back to the green curve and pull the mid somewhere around here. Let's go to the blue curves and bring down the low tones down by just a tiny bit so that the darker grass here doesn't look dyed with blue. Now little touch up on the red channel, I just pulled up the mid by a tiny tiny amount. Now let's do some final tweaking by clicking on the C icon right here and just bringing down the lows and bringing the highs up to make the image look even punchier. Sweet! It's starting to look gorgeous. Now finally, we're gonna drop in a brightness contrast node and set the brightness to 0.3 and the contrast to 1. For a final vignette effect, we're gonna use an ellipse mask node and set the width to 1 and height to 0.6 to get this oval shape. We're using this mask to get the black corners for the effect. But since this is definitely super sharp and unlike anything that we'd ever want in a vignette effect, let's just smooth it out by using a blur node. Turn on gamma because I think it looks more accurate and then set both the x and y values to 400. This will give us a very smooth vignette image. Now let's use a multiply node and multiply the original image by the vignette effect with a factor of 0.6 six to make it less harsh and we've just turned this piece of garbage into stylish wallpaper now let's take a look at a different scene something which you can just download right away and practice compositing for free yes it's the infamous classroom scene so let's open that up and start compositing it if you don't have it yet I'll leave the link to this project in the description. You'll get to see something like this in the compositor of this project. This is way too much work for this so we're just gonna do it in our own simple way for this video. So just select everything and delete it and let's start from scratch. So let's add the render layers node and set it up with a denoise node as shown earlier. And then we're just gonna save this denoised image for easier computing. Let's then delete the denoise node and bring that image in. First off, I wanted to start with some soft blooms of lights in the image and there's just a node for that called the glare node. So let's add a glare node now and change the type to fog glow which will give us that bloom effect. Now hook up the image to the glare node and see what happens. Nothing at all! Because we need to bring the threshold down to something that looks better. In this case, I think 0.3 was the best one. Now to preview only the effect, we need to put the mix to 1. The value of minus 1 shows us the original image while the value of 1 shows us only the effect. So we need to find a common ground between them that works the best with our scene. Again, I think 0.3 looked the best for it. Now that looks gorgeous already but you know what's missing? The sunbeams. Oh yeah. 
or the god rays or whatever you want to call them i want them coming in from the windows on the right here so we're just gonna try and isolate that part of the image the laziest and the fastest way to do it would be to just crop it out and it works perfectly fine so let's bring in a crop node and connect the original image because we don't want the bloom to affect the intensity of the sunbeams and then tweak the settings and check the preview to position it properly now we're going to add in the real magic of the sunbeams the sunbeams node this node makes life so much easier make sure to add some ray length to actually see the effect and then put the crosshair near the windows and preview this effect so now we're left with both of these effects and we need to combine them somehow and we can use a mix node for that and set it to screen which seems to be the best for combining these glow type of effects let's connect these to the screen node and set the factor to 0.3 now we have learned the most fundamental things about post processing in blender compositor let's do some of the same color correction as we did in the previous scene but for a disclaimer now that i really can't say that you'll enjoy this part because it's really based on my opinion and mood of what the render should look like you might have a different look in your head and i totally encourage you to try and get that look instead i'm just freestyling after this part so first up i wanted to crunch the blacks down a little and pump up some of the higher mid tones then i decided to bring down the red slightly from some of the lower mids and bumped it up in the higher tones then a slight bump in the blue channel in the lower tones I also used the brightness contrast node and set the brightness to 0.3 and the contrast to 1 for a subtle punch. After that, for whatever reason, I felt like adding some fog to it for a nice atmosphere. Totally wouldn't recommend this in an indoor scene like this if you're going for realism though. So yeah, I took the mist pass and tweaked it a little bit using a color ramp and mixed it with the image with it set to screen and factor to 0.5. Then I blurred it out a bit using a blur node and used a mix shader and hooked the original image and the blurred image with it to control the blur better. I set the factor to something super low like 0.1 to soften up the image a little. I think this effect looks very gorgeous when done in right amounts. Lastly, I added a vignette like the one from the last scene with an ellipse mask and a blur node and multiplied it with the image by a factor of 0.3 and that's all that we have done to get from this to this. This is pretty much all of the introductory stuff that will get help you to get started with post-processing in the Blender Compositor. I hope that this video was helpful to you and that it helps you to start making your own renders look even more beautiful. Before we end this video though, I just wanted to give a quick shout out to the Blender Community India Discord server where I get incredible feedback and help with anything that I work on. I'll leave the link in the description to where you can join this server. You can also check out our official Fluke Interactive Discord server where a lot of cool game developers and artists hang out. So I think it's a great place to chat about, well, anything really and especially about art. Links are in the description, you know what to do. I'll also leave my Patreon page down in the description if you want to support me by donating. Even something as small as a dollar would go a long way in helping me keep making this content. If you have any further queries or suggestions, you can leave them down in the comments below. Be sure to like and subscribe to not miss out on the future updates and share this video with anyone who you think could use the tips discussed in the video. Thanks for watching and we will meet again in the next one.